the commercial cells. That means, in our day to day life, we use different types of cells. Some particular types of cells are cells or batteries. Battery is nothing but when different large number of cells connected in series, then we call it as a battery. In our daily life, we use different types of cells or batteries. Starting from the motor bike which we run or the motor car that which we run is uh, works on uh, battery. The inverters we use also works on battery. The cell phone we use works on the battery. Torch light, transistor, radio all these work on battery. But in each case we use different types of uh, batteries where the design is different, the size is different, the material used is different and of course, the reaction involved is different. But anyhow, all these are one or the other type of galvanic cell, electrochemical cell. The principle involved is the galvanic cell principle, reaction is the cell reaction, redox reaction. But depending on the purpose and requirement, different types of cells have been designed. Then let us see, in, in these uh, cells, some of them are chargeable, some of them are non-rechargeable. Some of the cells are rechargeable and some of the cells are non-rechargeable. For example, the Leclanc cell, what we use in transistors and torch lights is a non-rechargeable. This Leclanc cell is nothing but commercially, we get it in, in the brand names like Averedi battery. Nippo battery, right? These are these batteries, as all of you must have seen. This is what is called a Leclanc cell, and these batteries are non rechargeable batteries. If once the battery stops working, we cannot recharge it, we cannot reuse it, it has to be thrown out again, we cannot use it. But whereas the cell battery that we use in our cell phone is a rechargeable battery that is of course, lithium ion battery that after use again we recharge it and we use it that is the reason of course, our cell phones regularly we put it for recharging and we will be keep using and as you know very well that the battery can run up to one year or two years depending on the usage. This is rechargeable. In the rechargeable battery, what happens is if once the cell reaction is, uh, if once the cell reaction is uh, uh, moving in a one particular direction and uh, the electrodes gets discharged, then on recharging again the cell reaction can be reversed. But in non-rechargeable batteries like Leclanc cell, if once the cell reaction is completed, the reactants we cannot get it back and same is the principle in the car batteries also. If once the car if the battery gets discharged, then we use we add some distilled water to the battery and we recharge it. So, that the cell reaction will be reversed and the reactants initially what we take again we can get it back and further can be used. So, let us see one by one and in, a, in, in addition to all this also we have something special class of uh, cells called fuel cells. In the fuel cells, the principle is the gases, the hydrogen and oxygen gases, not necessary hydrogen and oxygen, even it can be a hydrocarbon, hydrogen or any hydrocarbon gas is burnt in presence of oxygen and the energy liberated is used as a source of energy and that is fuel cells. So, all these one by one now we will get into it. So, commercial cells are the cells we use it for uh, commercial purpose. So, these are classified as primary cells and secondary cells. Primary cells are non-rechargeable 
these are rechargeable that means if once the cell reaction is over and if once the cell completely gets discharged this cannot be recharged this can be recharged and re they can be rechargeable and can be reused here the best example is a dry cell which otherwise we call Lacland cell and uh, mercury cathode cell and here we have uh, the lead acid battery which we use it in car and uh, bikes and inverters second one is nicad that is nickel cadmium battery then of course we have lithium and uh, lithium ion batteries which we use it in cell phones so this is the classification and besides this among the commercial cells also what we have is fuel cells in the fuel cells it is a gaseous fuels like hydrogen or hydrocarbons and oxygen gas are used as fuels and uh, the energy liberated in the combustion of these gases is used in generating the electric current so these are the this is one type this is second type and this is third type now let us see each type with examples one by one the dry cell is the one which we use it in our uh, transistors radios torch lights this commercially we know them as avaradi battery nipo battery like that in that as you see first we have a gray colored uh, cylindrical shaped vessel that gray colored cylindrical shaped vessel of course on which on top of which a red wrapper by avaradi blue wrapper by nippo this labels will be there but actually it is a gray colored uh, box or vessel that is actually a zinc container that is anode anode is zinc container and uh, at the middle as you can see there is a steel tip that goes till the bottom of that vessel throughout and that is what you call a cathode which is a graphite rod so cathode is a graphite rod and the space between this anode and cathode is filled with manganese dioxide is filled between the electrodes filled between the electrodes so it is rather the cathode is surrounded by manganese dioxide powder like this also graphite rod i can write surrounded by manganese dioxide powder like that also we can take it so it is a container in between there is a graphite rod and this is around in between there is a manganese dioxide powder then electrolyte is electrolyte is moist paste of moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride and the cell reaction says that at anode it is a zinc gets oxidized to zn2 plus and at uh, cathode it is manganese dioxide at cathode here you have manganese dioxide manganese dioxide with ammonium ion from ammonium chloride to mn o o h plus ammonia right this is the reaction this is the reaction at anode and this is the reaction at cathode these are the two cell reactions now here this is a non rechargeable why is it non rechargeable because 
here the zinc ion and ammonia that is formed respectively at anode and cathode they both again will react zn2 plus will react with the ammonia and which acts as a ligand and will form a tetramine zinc complex which is highly stable now this complex being highly stable the complex being highly stable this cannot be dissociated back so you cannot get back zinc ion as we cannot get the zinc ion the anodic reaction cannot be reversed and similarly the ammonia ammonia produced at the cathode also cannot be converted back into ammonium ion as the both are involved in the formation of a highly stable complex so said the cell reaction cannot be reversed so if once the cell reaction is completed and if once the cell gets discharged completely that again cannot be used that battery should be thrown out and here the cell potential as all of you must have seen on those batteries it will be written that e is equal to 1.5 volts each battery is of 1.5 volts suppose if we want for a particular a transistor or it requires 6 volts then we use four such batteries in sequence in torch light which works at 1.5 volts we use either one or three volts torch light requires what do you call two batteries so depending on the net voltage that is required we increase the number of batteries and this is the cell potential and this is the so anode is zinc container cathode is graphite rod surrounded by magnesium dioxide paste electrolyte is moist paste of ammonium chloride and zinc chloride and at anode that is the container itself zinc gets converted to zn2 plus at cathode magnesium dioxide paste <laughs> magnesium dioxide powder that what we use converts to mnooh with ammonia and the ammonia formed at the cathode zinc ions at the anode both will combine to give a stable tetramine zinc complex this is the overall sequence of reactions and the working of the dry cell or leclan cell and the cell potential is 1.5 volts this is a simple method so this is all of you must have seen the user batteries if you try to break up and see a black powder that comes out and a rod also you can see that rod is graphite rod the box appear that vessel appears grey in color that is zinc container and black powder that you see that black powder is magnesium dioxide powder so this is the cell reactions now let us see the uh, other uh, type of cell that is zinc mercury zinc amalgam battery let us see the amalgam battery the next is amalgam battery in the amalgam battery the anode is zinc amalgam Amalgam means a mercury addition compound of mercury and other metal. The other metal here is zinc. So, an addition compound of zinc and mercury, which is an alloy, a zinc mercury alloy, is amalgam. Then, cathode here is mercuric oxide plus carbon, and electrolyte is a paste of KOH and zinc oxide, paste of moist paste of zinc oxide and potassium hydroxide that acts as an electrolyte. The cell reactions is of course like in the dry cell, the anodic reaction here also it is zinc amalgam to Zn2 plus plus metallic mercury or the liquid mercury and uh, this is of course in presence of the OH also you will get H2O and at cathode it is a HGO plus H2O reduces to mercury liquid and uh, of course 2 OH minus overall the cell reaction is that zinc amalgam with mercuric oxide solid 
the zinc amalgam and solid mercuric oxide. Zinc amalgam is anode, solid mercuric oxide cathode in presence of OH that is this which acts as an electrolyte that will give you what you call zinc oxide and mercuric liquid. This is the overall reaction and here the cell potential is 1.35 volt. Here the EMF of the cell is little less. So, is the reason that this amalgam cell is useful mainly in low current devices. What are the low current devices? Hearing aids. Hearing aids what is used we use for the hearing purpose for deaf people that is used and also flash cameras. In the flash cameras as of course, now digital cameras we are using the rechargeable battery, but in the earlier days where we had this normal flash cameras there we used to have uh, these batteries and that is in those cameras this is used because those cameras will work at a low voltage that is 1.35 is sufficient. So, in, case, in such cases this what you call amalgam batteries are used and this is also if once the cell reaction is completed as uh, the mercury liquid zinc oxide is a highly stable oxide. Zinc oxide is a highly stable oxide. If once it is formed it is not possible for it to dissociate back into zinc and it is not possible to form the amalgam back. So, is the reason that if once this is done if once the cell gets discharged completely it is not possible to recharge it and cannot be reused it. So, is the reason that this is also non rechargeable battery. Now, we go to the chargeable batteries that is secondary batteries secondary battery. The secondary batteries are the batteries which we use again for a regular commercial applications and which are rechargeable these are rechargeable batteries. The best and uh, well known example is the batteries what we use are the lead acid battery. which we use it for in car, car battery, bikes, inverters, so on and so forth. In this the anode is grid of metal plates, grid of lead plates cathode is solid lead dioxide and electrolyte is 38 percent sulfuric acid aqueous sulfuric acid solution 38 percent aqueous sulfuric acid solution. Here what happens is that at anode it is lead reacts with sulfuric acid to give PbSO4 plus 2H plus plus 2 electrons. This is at anode. At cathode it is PbO2 plus H2SO4 plus 2 electrons or this H 2 SO 4 you write it as 2 H plus plus S O 4 2 minus that will give you P B S O 4 plus what you call 2 O H minus. Overall the cell reaction is that P B plus P B O 2 plus 2 H 2 S O 4 to give 2 P B S O 4 plus 2 H 2 O. So, here one common factor of com common uh, product what you observe both at anode and cathode is that at anode lead 
from 0 oxidation state getting oxidized to plus 2 where the product you are getting is lead sulphate and at anode lead at plus 4 oxidation state getting reduced to the again the same product lead sulphate 0 is oxidized to plus 2 where you are getting PBSO4 plus 4 is getting reduced to PBSO4 so at anode and cathode you are getting the same product and and both the cases of course it is the two electrons that is involved so the n factor for both the reactions for anodic reaction the n factor is 2 for cathode also the n factor is 2 overall it is the n factor is 2 for the overall reaction so here another very important thing that one has to note down is that the normality of normality of sulfuric acid here used is equal to its molarity because 2 moles of sulfuric acid required 2 moles of electrons that is n factor is 2. So, as n factor is 2 for 2 moles therefore, for 1 mole for 1 mole of sulfuric acid n is equal to 1. So, the n factor is 1 for sulfuric acid in this case. As the n factor is 1 for the sulfuric acid in this case, the normality of the acid is equal to molarity of the acid. And so, here the things what one has to observe is the anodic product, cathodic product both are same. Sulfuric acid molarity and normality are same. So, like this and both oxidation and reduction in both the reactions the product is the same and another very important thing is if once the lead sulphate is formed for this if you add distilled water if once the cell reaction is completed at both anode and cathode you, have, you will get lead sulphate if once you add distilled water this lead sulphate will dissociate into pb2 plus and so 2 minus ions and the pb2 plus oxidizes to pbo2 PB2 plus reduces to PB and the cell reaction is reversed. That is the reason that very frequently after quite a long use, I think you people must have seen that in car battery we add distilled water, we go to petrol pumps and we add distilled water many times or when we give it for uh, servicing, the service fellow will add distilled water into the battery. What is the reason for the distilled water is added to the battery? The reason is that when distilled water is added to the battery, then the PV lead sulphate will undergo hydrolysis. Lead sulphate will undergo hydrolysis. Get back your due to hydrolysis, you will get back sulfuric acid, you will get back PB2 plus as oxidizing to PB plus 4 reduces to PB, and you will get back the original anode and cathode reactants, and the cell reaction again can be proceeded further. So, here recharged uh, recharge can be done. This is what is the principle in the car batteries. Now, you will see the other type of rechargeable battery that is what we call NICAD battery. NICAD battery as the name suggests NICAD that means it is it involves nickel and cadmium. The anode here is cadmium metal solid cadmium metal and cathode is nickel hydroxide solid nickel hydroxide and uh, of course, this nickel hydroxide like in the lead acid battery as we have uh, a grid of lead plates like that here of course, it is a metal grid that it uh, consists of and uh, the electrolyte here is any base that we can use electrolyte is sodium hydroxide or potassium hydroxide and the cell reactions is that cadmium this is of course, the anodic reaction. 2 H minus 2 cadmium hydroxide and at cathode 
the nickel hydroxide and I O O H you can write or N A O H twice that you can write with water it changes to N A O H twice So, this is the product at the cathode or if you want to write reactant only that you can write it as an IOOH where nickel is in plus 3 product is this. So, either way we can write. So, this is how you it is and uh, finally, the reaction is that cadmium with nickel basic oxide basic oxide of nickel to give this is cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxide and once again here the cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxide as what we get like in the case of uh, lead acid battery as once we add uh, distilled water as there the lead sulfate undergoes hydrolysis and produces a H2SO4. Similarly, here as these are of course, the cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxides are being the basis. So, as once we add distilled water if once cadmium hydroxide and nickel hydroxide deposits respectively at anode and cathode as a reaction once completed. Then if you add distilled water again the required number of hydroxide ions in the solutions as we can get and the cell reactions can be reversed. So, this is again on adding water dissociation takes place and cell reaction can be cell reaction can be reversed and here E cell is equal to 1.3 volts. So, this nickel batteries or again we this is nothing but what we use in the Duracell. The Duracell batteries is what we can see is this nickel batteries which of course, again nowadays we are using it from the torch lights and all. But of course, this nickel batteries are not the ones that what we are using in cell phones. In the cell phones the batteries the cells that what we use is lithium or lithium ion batteries they are entirely different and there we have a lot many types of uh, uh, versions over there. In some cases it is the lithium ion in some cases it is the lithium metal. So, there, there is a different uh, cases over there right. So, this is overall chargeable and rechargeable batteries. The next what we have is commercial cells I mean sorry in the commercial cells next in the commercial cells what we have is fuel cells. In the fuel cells as I told that it is the gases that we use and once we see that fuel cells also. In the fuel cells gases combustible gases like hydrogen or hydrocarbons are burnt in oxygen. Here as for when it comes to cell construction here we have two carbon rods are uh, used as uh, electrodes and they are of course, porous carbon rods and in this sodium hydroxide is used as a electrolyte. Hydrogen and oxygen gases are passed inside through porous electrodes and the cell reactions are that at anode oxygen to 2 H 2 O at cathode it is 4 H plus 
plus O2 plus 4 electrons to 2H2O. Overall, the cell reaction is that this 4 H plus which is nothing but 2 H 2, 2 H 2 plus O 2 gives 2 H 2 O. This is the overall cell reaction. So, hydrogen and oxygen gas, hydrogen gas, hydrogen gas is burnt with oxygen whereby uh, water is produced. This is the overall cell reaction. So, here in a used uh, electrolytic chamber, carbon rods, porous carbon rods are placed, sodium hydroxide solution is uh, you added into the tank which acts as an electrolyte. Hydrogen and oxygen gases are passed through porous electrodes. Hydrogen gas is allowed to burn with oxygen, water is being produced and this reaction is highly exothermic reaction. The reaction here highly exothermic. So, the energy used here that is converted into electrical energy. right? So, and this is the overall reaction and the many use and very basic purpose of this fuel cells is that first of all theoretically they are supposed to be 100 percent efficient. So, there will be there is supposed to be no wastage of fuel. But in reality, 100 percent could not achieve so far, but it is highly efficient. The efficiency of the cell we determine by efficiency, efficiency is determined by delta G by delta H. Delta G is the free energy change of the reaction, delta G is nothing but as already we told it is minus N F E, this delta G by delta H minus N F E by delta H, this is work. The work extracted efficiency of not only fuel cell, the efficiency of any galvanic cell for that matter, efficiency of the any galvanic cell can be determined as the net work extracted that is delta G or minus N F E to the net energy change involved. So, work extracted per unit energy change that will give you the fraction of work that is obtained. So, that is what is actually the efficiency. So, the user the main advantages of the fuel cells is that they are supposed to be 100 percent efficient, but of course, practically 100 percent efficient still not yet achieved. Second thing as the gases used as hydrogen and oxygen gases or any other hydrocarbon gas which are normally expected to be non poisonous or non polluting hydrogen is a non polluting. So, there in any conventional batteries while we are using there is a lot of environmental pollution related problems, but in this case of fuel cells no such problem arises. Second thing as we told it is supposed to be highly efficient and third that here water is produced as a byproduct which can be used for any purpose especially the fuel cells are first used in Apollo space machines. right? So, here the water produced is being given for drinking by astronauts. So, this is another added advantage keeping all this in view environmental related problems, high efficiency and useful byproducts that is water. Keeping these three in view fuel cells are found to have large many applications and in coming days the future is more with usage of fuel cells rather than any of the other conventional commercial cells. So, this is another very important research area in the field of electrochemistry.